Hello. Uh, we are the Mass Gorillas. Our project was Mushroom AI Classification. I'll leave it up to the rest of the team to explain more about the project. So a little bit uh, about and why we chose to make an AI classification for mushrooms. We noticed that after the COVID-19 pandemic and increased usage of Zoom and web conference applications, many people have been suffering from a special type of fatigue called Zoom fatigue. One of the best recreational activities that counters Zoom fatigue is going outside and being surrounded by nature. This means that most people venturing outside in nature will probably see wild mushroom species blossoming. However, as mushroom encounters increase, misidentification by novice explorers will also increase. So using our AI mushroom identification software, it will give you the genus of the mushroom and effectively help you fight mushroom misidentification. So for our timeline or our pipeline, we began from August 8th to 11th brainstorming. While brainstorming ideas for our project, we came up with multiple different potential AIs to develop, although we ultimately decided to code a mushroom identification program. Some other AIs that we potentially, potentially were going to create were a license plate detection program, a sign language translator, a flower identifier, a smile detection program, and a program that would detect if you are driving correctly within traffic lanes. Our next step was data collection and preparation. From August 12th to 15th, we used Kaggle, a scientific logging website, to gather images of mushrooms within certain genera, and then used RoboFlow to label and annotate the images. Finally, we got about 320 images for each class with 2,800 images in total. The next step was training our model, which we focused on for August 18th to the 16th. During the model training phase, we imported our results from datasets from RoboFlow to begin training our AI. Using YOLO v5, we were able to train our data in epics. We ran 250 epics on our data sets and then had weights and biases print the metrics or the results. The next step was model evaluation and iteration. From August 18th to 19th, we used metrics or our confusion matrix, loss charts, and confidence curves from YOLO v5 to first sort out any issues with our model. One issue was removing a class that was appearing as duplicated. In addition, we also were able to test our model using images that we web scraped using SERP API. The final step was model deployment, which we did on August 24th. During our model deployment phase, we were able to find a bootstrap made template for our website and customize it to fit our project needs. We also implemented a method for users to upload their files and images to our website to use the mushroom classification AI. How did we collect and prepare our data? We use a pre-existing Kaggle dataset as our first and primary source of mushroom images to our AI. In addition to our Kaggle dataset, we supplemented it by using Google SERP AI to web scrape additional images to evaluate our model's performance. In order to prepare our images for our AI's training, we uploaded our dataset to RoboFlow and assigned hundreds of images to each of our team members to annotate to which we would then upload to Google Colab where our, pro where our model was located. With RoboFlow, our, our team was able to annotate our massive data set. Then Ro RoboFlow separated our images into a training, testing, and a validation set. Finally, it resized and auto-oriented our images for training. Um, so for modeling our product, we use YOLO v5, which is an object detection algorithm that divides an image into a grid system and that will detect an object within itself. So first it takes an image as input, then it extracts region proposals, computes CNN features, and then classifies regions. Okay, so um, evaluate our model, we first looked at a confusion matrix, which is a matrix used to evaluate the performance of a classification model by comparing target versus predicted values. So the table above is the confusion matrix for our model. And on the left side, it has the predicted values and the bottom side has the true values. 
and each of the dark blue boxes shows that the AI's prediction matched the true value the majority of the time with only a few occasional errors. And we calculated a 90.67% accuracy. We then looked at precision and recall graphs. Precision measures the correct positive predictions and recall measures the actual positive labels that were correctly classified in the model. And the graphs are curving upwards that shows that the accuracy was increasing. Uh, we then looked at validation loss graphs and validation loss is the calculated error after running the validation set. Specifically box loss measures how closely the model can put a bounding box over the object and CLS loss measures how accurately the model can split an image into smaller areas. And since the curve is sloping downwards, it shows that the loss was decreasing. And then finally, we looked at the MAP graphs, which is mean average precision. And since both the curves are sloping upwards, it shows that the model is becoming more stable and consistent. Uh, once again, exploring and trekking nature has become a popular recreational activity. And with the power of AI, you can bring a mini forager in the palm of your hand to identify any mushrooms that you can take a picture of. For our team, it comprises of Pallavi, me, Alex, Omar, Brandon, Keegan, and our instructor, Jonathan. I'm going to do a dem demonstration of what our AI can do. So we're going to open up a mushroom image that we have here. And it'll return its genus, the area that it found the mushroom in, and its confidence level in the mushroom that it identified. I'm going to do two other images just to demonstrate. This is a mushroom cluster, and it has identified most of the mushrooms in there. And as you can see over here, it lists the confidence levels of all of the mushrooms that it found. Do one more. This is another one of where it confidently predicted each of the separate mushroom stems. Why do we miss sometimes? There are three main reasons as to why our application is not 100% accurate. Firstly, many mushrooms have overlapping characteristics, making it difficult for the computer to differentiate between them. The labels for each image were given to us while web scraping and therefore may not have been fully accurate. And there were several hundred images to train in a short time frame, resulting in an inaccuracy in prediction. Thank you. That, that was our demonstration. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. <laughs>